I was in fifth grade when I noticed uh, light spots on my hands um, and really didn't know what it was. Uh, my mother took me to the doctor and um, they diagnosed me with a rare skin disease called vitiligo. Um, over time, the vitiligo had progressed, spread it further from my hands into my face and throughout my body. Um, I was having a lot of self-esteem issues um, with the way my face would look. Um, and my mother noticed uh, a, a brand of makeup called Derma Blend. Um, she had read up on it, and one day she asked me that I want to go to Hudson Belk to look at um, the, the makeup. And we went to Hudson Belk, and the technician um, applied the makeup onto my face. And um, it made me look good. It made me look strong. Um, uh, and, I, and I started wearing it in seventh grade. Um, my mother started applying it to my, to my face. Um, um, I, I put it on, uh, I had a set with, put some setting powder on it and sit five to 10 minutes. And once I have it on, it's pretty much on all day long until I wash it off. Um, throughout the day, I noticed like smudges, uh, everywhere, especially like on my clothes and, and things. But, um, that's what, um, I had to do, um. As time got on, grew on, I, in high school, I had to, um, it was, it was advancing more. Um, at that time, my father had started putting a plow on the makeup on my face, um, uh, which he, he was pretty skillful at, at, at blending my makeup to make it look more natural than, than something as a cover. Um, that period of time, you know, I was still em empowered, uh, whereas it, it didn't bring a lot of attention um, on my face, but my hands were still um, rapidly turning white. Um, the dermatologist had told me of a treatment called PUVA when I was in 10th or 11th grade, and um, I decided to take PUVA to restore my pigment. Um, I tried Puva for maybe a year and a half, and during that process, uh, my pigment was restored. But um, during that period, I, I experienced a lot of um, sunburns um, because the Puva treatment was a live box treatment that I had to do three days a week, which required um, uh, medicine by mouth before the light treatments and. What, what came along with the medicine is I had to wear uh, some blocker, sun blocker shades to prevent um, me getting cataracts once I take take the medication. Um, that period was a period where I was trying to find myself um, socially. Uh, you know, fashionably, um, it's hard for me to walk out or be around amongst my friends and peers with some big sunblock glasses on. So we, uh, my parents um, invested into a, a pair of, of fashionable sunglasses, um, which was uh, America, uh, Emmanuel Kahn's. Um, they had snake skins on it. Um, it made me look hip again. It made me feel good. You know, I had my makeup on, I had my sunglasses on, and I felt good about, um, you know, my journey with vitiligo. Um, until days that it rained. Those days that it rained, it caused um, issues for me because as people started joking, why do you have sunglasses on? It's rain outside, it's dark outside. Why are you wearing sunglasses? Well, that kind of messed with my self esteem a little bit and it made me stop crossing um, buildings. Uh, my school in Low had a East Building and a West Building. And in order to get to class, you would have to go outside on a breezeway to get to the next class. And um, so those rainy days, I didn't change classes during during those times. I would wait till the target bell ring and everybody in class before I traveled to my next class. Um, at the time, if you had three late tardies, you you get automatic after school detention. So um, if it was a rainy season. I pretty much stayed in that school detention. Um, so uh, it got around to the point where is that um, 
you know, the poor treatment became a little too much bearable, too bearable for me. Um, the pain that I was suffering from, from being burned from my hands to my elbows, my lips, to my feet where I couldn't even put, wear socks um, on, on my feet and definitely could put shoes on. Um, so I had made the decision to my parents. I was just saying that, you know, that, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for everybody and I'm really sacrificing myself. Um, you know, I couldn't go home at the work, at the school to go play basketball or hang out with my friends because I was always going to a doctor's visit. So we discontinued, um, derma blend. Um, um, so I just went right back with the makeup again, once, once, over time, skin still steady progressing, where it was pretty much covering my hands totally. Now it's on my knees and my feet are covered, um, um, all white. Um, and I'm more so into college. And I'm at this point, I'm I'm applying my my makeup. Um, and the dermal blend held up. You know, if I swim, if I play basketball, um, you know. I would just had to apply it one time a day unless I was going going out somewhere. Like uh, say if I'm going to playing basketball, go home and shower, then I put a, new, a, a fresh coat on. So um, that's that has been, that was my, my, my schedule on a, on a daily basis for the last 30 some years is to wear makeup. Um, I met my wife when I was, uh, my best friend's mother had had a brain aneurysm. She was rushed rushed to rushed to, to the emergency room, and uh, in the emergency room, um, my wife. Well, she was my wife at the time, but um, I met her in high school, but I didn't know her that well. But she was sitting in the lobby, and we was just talking. And she said that she uh, spends a lot of times at the hospital because you know her father has um, stage four cancer. So we talked and we talked about people that we knew um, each other. And we became, from that day forward, we became pretty close. Um, from time to time, she would invite me places. Um, and it was one time that she invited me to uh, church. And I went to church. It was men's day at her church. And uh, there was a guest pastor out of um, St. Louis. And he said that he did, he met his wife and on the third day he proposed to her. And his wife told him, what took you so long? And, and the next thing that he said stood with me. He said he didn't marry his wife. He didn't date his wife to marry her. He married her to date her. Um, probably that was around the 19th, June 19th. My 31st, 35th birthday was July 26th. On July 31st, I invited all my family and friends to a birthday gathering. And um, that night I had decided that I was going to marry her to date her. So that night she didn't know. Uh, my parents didn't know. No one even knew except for her father. Uh, he didn't come to the dinner, but everybody else was there. And I was late. And I was late because I was nervous. And I also um, called her father and asked her, asked him if I could have his, have his, uh, would he, would he agree for me to propose to his, his daughter? Um, and he told me that night, he said, that's why I'm still living is because I want to give her away. And, um, so I went to my birthday party and, uh, my daddy met, my father met me outside and he said, what's going on? He was like, you know, um, who's paying for all of this? Because there's a restaurant in Raleigh had just opened Red Bowl. And I pretty much had the whole restaurant. I had live in entertainment. I had some some fire dancers. I had a lot, I, um, ice sculptures, everything in, in, in the venue. So my father, I pulled him outside and I told him, and, and he said, well, you know, he said, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And I, he said, well, Tr Latrice is a nice woman. He said, well, um, have you told your mother? I said, no, I haven't told anyone. 
and he said that he was going to um, tell my mother to come outside for me to t share with her. So she come outside and I told her and then eventually I went inside and we partied and had a great time for my birthday and then I got on one knee and proposed. Um, and my wife has been the support uh, in, in in my life completely. Um, um, with with Vitiligo, she still has been my support. Um, um, I wore makeup, you know, I had to tell her the, 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 you know, about me wearing makeup and she said it, it didn't matter to her. Um, I have a son that's 18, uh, at, at 18 at that time that we had met and, um, and that we were dating. And, um, you know, I was just telling her some of my issues that I had to deal with, um, with, with him when we started talking about a family, um, because I missed out on um, part of my son's childhood. Um, I was always in his life, but little things like parents would have when they go out to eat lunch or, or activities at kids' schools, at a kids' school, I missed that. And I, I missed that because of, um, I didn't want other kids um, teasing and joking my son on the way his father looked. So, um, so I knew if I brought another child in the world, I didn't want to miss out on that time um, because you know I protected my son that nobody else would would, would joke him. Um, that um, I use the way I look as a way to keep him focused by saying that you don't want me to come up to your school. Um, um, so if you don't do if you don't get better, I um, I'll be up there. So that kind of kept him. Um, on the right path uh, in school, but I missed that time. So, um, you know, I got married um, April 23rd, 2011. Um, and um, we ended up having a child in June, I'm sorry, excuse <laughs> December 31st of, of 2013. And um, that's my heart. Um, all my kids are uh, my heart. I have two. Uh, and Asia, uh, you know, when she got to, um, you know, be around me and see how I look, she uh, she would always tell me, like, Dad, I want to look just like you. And when, you know, she see me put my makeup on and, you know, I was, you know, it was, it, it made me feel good. But still in the back of my mind is, is that Vitiligo hadn't been anything to celebrate um but you know if if something should happen and she had been Lago, i just knew i just wanted to be able to um for her to be comfortable and her to be to to be herself and you know because i knew what i went through having to um fight um what people said negative about me um um uh, growing up and in her day with social media, I felt that Vitiligo would be a target for uh, a lot of ridicule and a lot of jokes. So I wanted to be able to be an advocate to tell, you know, the story about Vitiligo, um, you know, um, my story. And um, just so happened, um, you know, wearing makeup um, was what gave me strength what made me comfortable um, at the same time. Um, I think it brought a lot of attention to me because um, I wore the makeup around areas that had, that I had lost pigment. And um, so people would say um, that I was in blackface because it was noticeable that, you know, that I had, you know, white pigment and I mean, white, white skin and, and dark color makeup. And um, just so happened, you know, after 35 years, it was time for me to 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 change my makeup. I mean, change my driver's license with DMV. And um, I went in the DMV office, and lines were were long, and it was a long day. Um, I sat in there three hours, three four hours, waiting on them to call my number. And when they finally called my number, I step up, you know. Uh, kind of felt um, relieved that I'm really about to get my license and leave up out of here. 
and the DMV examiner said, um, uh, can I have your ID? Um, he gave me the price and everything. And when it was time for me to take my picture, well, he checked my eyes and everything. When it's time for me to take my picture, he told me he couldn't take my picture. And I said, why can't you take my picture? And he said, because you're wearing makeup. And I said, sir, I said, well, I have a, a skin disease called vitiligo. And I said, well, I always wore makeup. I said, you can look in the system. I've had a driver's license for North Carolina since I was 16 years old. Um, all of my pictures have have makeup on it. Um, I said, my passports. I said, um, he said, well, sir, he said, well, we do not allow you to take any pictures in the state of North Carolina with makeup on. And I said, so are you refusing to take my picture? And he says, um, why well, can I take your picture? He said, you can step in the bathroom behind you and wash your face and come back out. And and I can take your picture. And I said, well, that's not the, that's not how um, I just can't wash my face with, with toilet paper for the makeup to come off. Um, he said, well, we open up tomorrow. If you can come first thing in the morning, um, before you put your makeup on. And um, I felt really um, beat up, you know. Uh, I felt like turning over the desk in there. I really felt like going ballistic, but um, I just went ahead and just left out. Uh, when I left out of the DMV, I just broke down crying in the car. And uh, just like, you know, um, this, this is the most humiliating thing that has ever happened to me. And my wife called just so happened when I was out there and she's like, what's wrong? And I couldn't even take, take it even any, anymore. I, I broke out crying even more as I was telling her. And, and she, she got off the phone, um, very upset. And probably about 30 or 45 minutes later, um, the, um, DMV office called me. Um, and it was office for Tori, Tori Jessup. I think he's a DMV uh, commissioner. And he called me and asked me, um, said he heard I had a very trying day and um, that he wanted to know what had happened. So I explained to him and he said, well, will you go back up and take a picture? And I told him, you know, um, I'm just going to drive without license. Like, I, I don't want to go through that. And I said, nobody should have to go through what I went through. If if I would have went, if I was someone that was had uh, low self-esteem, or depressed, depressed, or in depression, or suicidal, the state would definitely have blood on their hands today, on based on the way I was treated. So you know, he he uh, reinforced that he would apologize and that he would invest, he would investigate. But he said he scheduled me an appointment at another branch that I can go through and don't have to wait in line. They, they would take my picture. Um, and that day forth, I went home. Well, I went to, we had a family reunion in Williamsburg, Virginia. And that day I went to Williamsburg, Virginia. As soon as I got to the hotel, I took a shower and I took my makeup off. And the whole time that I was in Virginia, I didn't wear my makeup. Um, I felt free um, once I took off the makeup. Um, I felt good. I didn't have the stares that I, I once had. Um, but then again, I didn't have my identity. Me wearing my makeup was giving me my identity. And when I came back to Raleigh on that Sunday, I came right to, I went right into the house and I put my makeup on. And my wife asked me, like, why are you putting makeup on? And it's because it was my strength. It was who people knew me as. Um, um, so I, I, I walked. Peace after that, and I just decided tonight is going to be the night that I don't wear makeup anymore. And I, I had a photographer come to my house. He took pictures of me without my makeup. And I got a friend that has a lot of followers on Facebook. And I had him post a picture with a letter that I wrote stating it's me. And that, you know, I was reintroducing 
myself to a community that I've been around for the last 40 years um, and just letting people know um, what to expect, what I've been going through and the journey that I'm that I'm, I'm, I'm about to embark on and that I need everybody's support. And so um, I had them send it. And then that night I went to a class reunion party and people came up, hugged and loved and made me feel good. And I felt great, you know, I felt free. Um, then, you know, as weeks went on, I hit a period of, um, I'm not gonna say depression, but I went from being the most recognizable person in the area to 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 someone that people didn't recognize. People that didn't have social media didn't know that I had taken off my makeup or that I was wearing makeup. And when I go out in the community and, and I speak to someone that didn't know, it it you know they see the smile and they hear my voice. And it takes a minute for them to know who who I am. So, for about a year and a half, um, I spent that time reintroducing who who I am. I think that's it right now. I'm talking from my head. Wow! Wow! Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. Wow! Okay, that was so extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. Here's the here's what I loved. Um, I was taking notes. Uh, well, you, you hit the, I told you earlier about that. I was taking Puva for, uh, Puva for everybody else, but it's hurting me. Mm -hmm. um, when you talked about your son and you didn't want others teasing him, so you didn't go to his school. And then you said, wearing makeup gave me strength and made me feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. But others accused me of being in blackface. Mm -hmm. But one day I go to the DMV. I'm in line for three, four hours. And um, I go to the front, do the eye test. Guy tells me, uh, I can't take off, I can't take your picture. You tell him, look, I've had a driver's license in North Carolina since I was 16. You can check the records. Like I'm always in makeup. And he's like, look, when it's North, in the state of North Carolina, we can't do that. You go in there and wash your face. And then you say, I can't just wash my face with toilet paper. Um, and then you left. And you said, I felt really beat up. And then at that point, got in the car and I just broke down crying. And I was like almost in tears, just kind of listening to that part. And then you get a call from like 30, 30 minutes later, whatever, you get a call from the uh, DMV commissioner, from the DMV commissioner's office. And uh, you say, you know, uh, they're being empathetic. Like say, I heard you had a trying day and, you know, on and on. You're like, yeah, like I, I, I shouldn't have to go through this. Um, fuck it. I'm going to just drive without a license. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to I'm not going to have a license. I'm just done. Uh, but then they suggested, why don't you go to this other branch? There won't be a line. You won't have to see that other person. Just have a fresh experience. Well, you then go to Virginia for a family reunion and you check into the hotel. And the first thing you do is shower and you take off your makeup. And that weekend was the first time that you went out in, in a space without your quote, strength. Uh, and you felt good. You felt free. Nobody was staring at you. But you also didn't have your identity. Because the makeup was your strength. And so you uh, you felt good in Vir Virginia. You're free. But then you return to Raleigh. First thing you do is put your makeup back on. Mm -hmm. And your wife was like, why are you why are you putting on your makeup? Like, you know what? Like, what is that? And at that point, when you were telling the story, Terrell, your uh, there was something that was going on with your cam uh, with your uh, your your Wi-Fi signal. Yeah, somebody was calling. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, OK. So that part cut off. But then you said, uh, but then I decided that, uh, OK, I think I'm ready. So I, I wash my face and I set up a photo shoot. And I do my first photo shoot without makeup, a professional photo shoot. And then I have a friend who has a big social media following to post my picture without makeup. And I declare uh, I'm introducing myself, like I'm reintroducing myself. I'm letting everybody know who is the real Terrell. Um, the journey that I'm about to embark on. 
And you said, and then that night I went to my class reunion, a party that was being held for my class reunion. And everybody is embracing me. There's tons of love and people receive me graciously. And oh, that, oh my God, that was so beautiful. But then you had another situation. It was like, all of a sudden I went from the most recognized person to like, don't nobody recognize me by my, by my look. They just recognized me by my voice. Mm -hmm. And so that became, um, you know, um, a, a, another deal. And, uh, and then I cannot, I don't remember how you, well, you closed by saying, Lex, I don't know what else to say from there. Mm -hmm. So I think the thing that we would cap it with is, um, uh, what is like the, the, the one thing that you've learned, uh, that people will embrace you, um, they'll, they'll embrace the you that, that, you know, that you show up as, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, your life is better, freer. You've built a new identity, um, that does not require that, um, you know, the, you know, the makeup, um, like I have reintroduced myself, my, like how, how, how have things, uh, like one one final thing that thing that things change so so like so that all of that was like yes 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 all of that was powerful mm -hmm. where you took me out of the story was when you began to talk about the whole experience of proposing to your wife mm -hmm. that is a separate story okay that is an important story that story is too big mm -hmm. for you to just kind of couch it in there so here's what I'm about to do uh, and I'm uh, I'm and I'm I'm, I'm like we're, we're still recording mm -hmm. so when I send you the video you're going to see your story, like what you just shared. You're going to see my comments. And then I'm about to retell your story with, with the arc that I want you to, to, to start becoming comfortable with. Okay. 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 So here's your story. I was in the fifth grade, about 10 or 11, when I started to notice these white spots that were coming up on my hand. My mother took me to the doctor and I was diagnosed with a rare skin condition called vitiligo. And uh, vitiligo is where you basically lose pigmentation. And uh, so the doctor told me that, you know, this is going to advance. And um, and it did. At first, it was just in my hands. My hands began to uh, go go white and then it spread to my face. And by seventh grade, I began to wear makeup. Um, my mother took me to uh, Hudson Belk and um, found a makeup, she had researched a makeup brand called um, Dermablend. And she, uh, they sat me in the, the, the chair and uh, they found my match. And um, then we, we, we bought the makeup. So in seventh grade, I began to, uh, to wear makeup, Dermablend everywhere I went. Uh, my mother would apply it in the morning before I went to school. And then she would have to apply a, um, a setting powder and I would have to sit there for about five to 10 minutes. And then after that, I could go on to school. My makeup would be on all day. There'll be a few smudges on my clothes. Like if I wore a collar shirt or something like that, if I touch my face, I um, might have like a smudge or something on the paper. But outside of that, everything, um, you know, it was good. Um, and then I got to high school and uh, my hands were pretty much white and it was spreading more and more on my face. And so, um, my dad began to apply the derma blend and he was actually really good at it. He could blend really well, make it look real natural. And, um, and I just appreciated that my family was so concerned about, you know, my esteem and they, you know, it was, it was all hands on deck, um, you know, you know, protecting me from, you know, from this condition. But there was a treatment that, um, it's controversial, uh, it's called PUVA. And it was basically me getting under a light box and uh, it would uh, repigment my skin. But there were a ton of side effects. I had to take medicine. I would get blisters uh, on my, my lips, on my feet. I couldn't put, you know, sometimes I couldn't wear socks or uh, couldn't wear, you know, put on shoes. And so there were all of these different things. And so finally, uh, and then I, you know, I couldn't be outside. I couldn't have, you know, all of the experiences with my friends. And so finally, I just said to my dad, hey, dad, um, this is impacting my quality of life. So um, I, like I am, you know, I'm taking Puva for everybody else, but it's hurting me. And so at that point, uh, after having taken that treatment for about a year, we got off of it, began to reapply the Dermablend um, makeup. Fast forward, I um, 
am a, a, a snappy dresser. I'm popular. I got the cool car. Everything is good with me. And, um, and then I began dating my wife. Now I met her in high school, but I didn't know her that well. We ran into each other um, in the hospital. I was there to visit a friend of mine whose uh, one of his parents had been rushed to the hospital for brain aneurysm. And so I, uh, she was sitting there in the lobby. And so we began to talk and to catch up. And I learned that her dad uh, was in the hospital uh, with terminal, uh, with, stage four ter uh, with stage four cancer. And so she was in the hospital a lot. And, you know, we began to date and we began to talk. And uh, one day she invited me to church and I showed up on the Sunday that was um, that was men's Sunday. They had a guest preacher there from St. Louis and um, he was saying some really interesting things. But there's one thing in particular that he said that really that really stood out. Uh, he when he was talking about his wife, he said, I, I, I proposed to my wife uh, on our third date. And when I proposed to her. Uh, on the third date, she said, what took you so long? And then he said, uh, what I learned, like he, he, what he said, what, uh, what he said something I'll never forget. He said, uh, I didn't date my wife to marry her. I married my wife to date her. And I realized that this woman, um, my, my wife, Katrina, is the one uh, who I'm like, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling this. And so six weeks after, like, officially dating her, I proposed. It was a big deal. And um, in this courtship process, I let her know about my condition. I let her know about, you know, the makeup. And it was not a problem with her. Like I said, I was, and I was just, I was just smooth like that. Like, you know, I, I you know, I had, I, I had edge and, uh, and, and, and she loved it. We have children. And um, I did have a son before her. And um, I missed out on a, before I got married and I missed out on a lot of his childhood experiences because of the LIGO. And the reason why is that I didn't want to embarrass my son. I didn't want to be a target to him being teased. So I would just opt out of of uh, of attending um, any of his school events. But I would also threaten him if he was acting up in school. I say, look, if you don't want me to come up to that school, like you better, you know, shape up. And that seemed to do the trick. But I'm ultimately embarrassed by using that as a tactic um, because I missed out on so much of his life. So I told my wife, hey, when we have children, just FYI, I'm not going to miss out on on um, their important events. I will be there for them. Everything was good. Um, I didn't want anybody teasing my son. Um, so it's like that. That was just how I how I showed up in the world. I wore makeup. My makeup gave me strength. Uh, my makeup made me feel comfortable. But others would also accuse me of being in blackface because you could see where I was, where was light up top, and like you could see the 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 the, the dark makeup that I wore. And so they often accused me of 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 being in blackface. But I couldn't care less about what others thought. Until one day I was at the DMV. It's time for me to get my new driver's license, time to renew the license. And I had to take a new picture. Now, I've had a driver's license in North Carolina since I was 16. Each one of those pictures has been with me in makeup. But after standing in line for three, four hours, I go to the counter, uh, do the vision test and go through all of the preliminary stuff. And when it's time for me to stand before the camera and to take my picture, the guy behind the counter says, uh, I'm sorry, I can't take your picture. You got on makeup. And I tell him, hey, I've had a you know a driver's license in, in North Carolina since uh, I was 16. And all of them are in makeup. Just check your files. You'll see. I have a skin condition and that's why I have to wear the makeup. And this guy's arguing me down. He's like, I'm sorry. Um, in North Carolina, you cannot wear makeup with, you know, uh, you cannot have uh, take a, 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 a picture uh, for your driver's license, a state issued um, uh, document with makeup, wearing makeup. You've got, uh, you've got to go in the bathroom and uh, wash the makeup off and then I can take your picture. And I say to him, I can't just go in the bathroom and wash my face with toilet tissue. So I left and I felt really, really beat up. I was angry. I wanted to just tear up the, the, the DMV, like just, you know, turn over tables. I was, just, I just, I, I was angry and I felt beat up. But then I got in my car and I just broke down crying. 
and my wife called me and it just got worse. Like I could not stop. I was, I was crying even harder as I was relaying to her what had just happened to me. I felt utterly humiliated. And then I'm sitting in the car and about 30 minutes later, I get a call from the, uh, the commissioner, the DMV commissioner's office. And, um, I'm talking with the commissioner and they were very empathetic and they were very apologetic. And, uh, and I said to them, listen, um, if I were someone with low self-esteem, if I were someone who was depressed or suicidal at this moment right now, North Carolina would have blood on its hands. But that's not who I am. Who I am instead is the person who says, I don't need to drive around with a driver's license. Forget it. I'll just go. I'll just drive around with no driver's license. And um, so the, the commissioner was trying to work with me, was saying, like, you know, why don't we just uh, why, like tomorrow, if you could just go to this other branch, then you'll be able to take your picture. There won't even be a line. And I was just not really you know, interested at that point so because we were uh, heading to Virginia uh, for the weekend for a family reunion. Uh, but I did appreciate that, you know, they were really empathetic, um, you know, in, in the situation. So my family and I travel to Virginia for the family reunion, check into the hotel. First thing I do is get in the shower. And I wash my makeup off my face. And then I look in the mirror. And I made the decision to go that entire weekend with no makeup. And it felt so liberating. I felt so free. Had a great weekend. But when the weekend was up, returned to Raleigh. And the first thing I did was put my makeup back on. And my wife said, well, why are you putting your makeup on? Like what, like what's going on? And um, I was like, I don't know. My, my makeup was my strength. That was my identity. But then it occurred to me how long I had been doing this. And I just reflected on how good it felt in Virginia to not have the makeup on and to also not have the stares. I didn't look weird. I looked like myself. And so I decided I was ready to introduce the world to who I am. So I booked a professional uh, photographer uh, to come and to do a photo shoot with me without my makeup. And then I had a friend of mine post that picture of me without makeup. He had a big social media following. And so he posts the picture and I say, let me introduce myself. Uh, this is who I am. And I begin to, and I tell my story in the social media post. And I want them to basically um, introduce them to the journey that I'm about to embark on. Um, after having spent 35 years with makeup, I am now ready to go as my natural self to do what to do life as, 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 as Terrell without makeup. And then that night I went to a class reunion party and I was overwhelmed by all of the love that I received. I was overwhelmed by all of the hugs and everyone who had read the post and it really resonated with them. I was embraced uh, for, for who I am. And it felt good for a while. But then a few weeks after that, it suddenly uh, I, I felt a, a little depressed uh, because this new identity kind of stripped away some of a little bit of my celebrity magic. You see, prior to then, I was able to go out and everybody I was easily one of the most recognized people, one of the most recognizable people, um, you know, in my in my community. But without my makeup. Nobody recognized me. I could go out and uh, they would act like I was a total stranger until I would approach them and I would speak. And they're looking at me strange because they can see my, they can hear my voice. They recognize my, recognize my voice. It's my face that they don't recognize. But this is who I am. I made that decision X number of years ago. I have not looked back and I have been grateful for all of the ways that, um, when you show up as yourself, when you make room for other people to receive you for who you really are, um, then life is just sweeter and better um, for everyone. And seen. Yeah. What you think? It's powerful. It's your story. 
powerful. Your story is powerful. I'm gonna record this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna um, download this, um, and I'm gonna start it like where you started, and then I want you to to watch what I did. And what I did was just took out the the proposal. Mm -hmm. I put your wife in there. You proposed after six. Was it after six weeks, basically? Yeah, um, yeah four weeks. Yeah, it's four weeks. Okay, but you know what I'm saying. But 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 you tell us like you know four weeks. I proposed, yeah. and I told her like that. You know, this is who I am without making you know. So you so you don't have to give us that that whole part. Um, and then we just have to figure out like what is the real um, what's what's the takeaway for you, the legitimate takeaway. So I I, I, I just fudge something, um, but but you get to decide that one. Okay. Does that work? Okay. I know we have been on the scroll for a minute. Uh, yeah. I'm going to send you the proposal for the uh, five stories every brand must tell. And um, what I just took you through is what I want to take your friends through. Sounds great. Sounds everybody's going to everybody's going to tell this story. But I want you to start practicing this because I'm going to use you as my example when y'all get together on April 9th through 11th. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Terrell. Right, thank okay. Right. Take care.